you've had this happen to you before. So it's not a new concept, but it's a concept that we deal with today. And before we dive deeper into the possible reasons, I want to give a third shout out for today. And that is to two people. Uh, first, Conversations with Lamp. You can find them on SoundCloud and IG, Conversations with Lamp. And First Gen Fly, makers of fine custom apparel, shirts, polos like the one I have on today, and other items that you can actually use to um, promote your business or say a particular saying. You can get it custom made at First Gen Fly. That is www.first1st. G A N F L Y dot com. So, shout out to Conversations with Lamp on IG and, and SoundCloud and firstgen.com, firstgenfly.com. So, the three reasons why we experience uh, these writer's blocks. Uh, the first reason are emotional blocks that we're going through. Um, I'm not qualified to speak with you on those things. Um, you have therapists, or I suggest you seek out a therapist to deal with any emotional blocks that you may have that are for keeping you from writing. Um, and it's definitely worth checking out. Um, these emotional blocks can include anything from just being in a creative slump, um, having physical illness, depression, ending of relationships can destroy writing, creativity, financial pressures, a sense of failure, an overall general sense of failure. Once again, I'm not here to be a therapist. This is not what I do. Uh, but I am giving you one of the three possible reasons why we will experience writer's block. A second reason is more along my, my lane. It is the misuse of high and low energy activities. Um, and actually not only just the misuse, but not even understanding your energy level. We all have varying energy levels. There are moments where we have high energy and we can do some of the more tedious drudgery work like writing, reading in depth, things like that. And we all know what kind of person we are. We'll, we'll say it in conversation. I'm a morning person. I'm an evening person. What we're saying is at these times of days, I have my greatest sense of energy and purpose. And it's the best time in which I can get work done. So, you, knowing that you have high energy moments means you also have low energy moments. And those low energy moments are the times of day where you have the least amount of energy to do the hard work. Now, not knowing those two can lead to writer's block because you're maybe trying to do high energy activities during a low energy time. Um, high energy activities include things like deep reading, uh, writing, um, things like that. Low energy times include things like gathering articles to read or preparing to read or doing some of the more, um, I guess, non-intellectual, tedious aspects of life to prepare to do your high energy activities at another time. Now, the reason why I call this the misuse of those time periods is generally this. If you sit down to work at a high energy activity, and you find yourself needing to do the low energy activities before you can get to the high energy activities. By the time you get to the high energy activities, you will have lost your energy. And that makes the work harder. So if, if to get to the point where I can sit down to write, I have to go gather all of my materials. I have to open up folders, get everything set up, set up my desk, set up my table get a drink, have it sit to the side like this, um, gather my notes, all of those low energy things that I would need to do before I can get to the energy of writing. By the time I get to my writing time, I will have zapped out 80% of my energy. And now I'm at low energy during a high energy time and I can't get it together. I know this is real because I've done it. <laughs> so that is when you have you misuse your high and low energy activity times and that can lead to a writer's block so remember that know your energy levels and when your low energy times do all the setup that you need even if it's at the night before set up your computer set up your folders set up your notes have a glass or a bottle or a jug of water in the fridge ready to just grab and go check all your social media get that out the way 
And then when you get up in the morning, from the time you go freshen up and then hit the computer room, those ideas are still flowing. Get right down, turn the computer on, bring everything up and get to work. You can use a couple minutes to get you ramped up and going, but that's a better use of your time during that time. So I would suggest that you find those ways to do that. You clear the low energy activities out of the way so that by the time you sit down to write, you have your high energy there and you can go about the business of doing your high energy activity. Now, if you also plan this correctly long term, you don't have to be pushed against the wall where you got to use a low energy moment to do a high energy activity. I've got to do that tonight. I got some revisions for an article that I'm writing and I've got to now use my high energy time or activity during a low energy time. After this, I want to eat and go to bed, but I still got to get work done. So that said, know your times. The third reason and possibly the biggest reason that can really, I uh, guess, derail your writing is not outlining, not doing those activities necessary to set up good writing habits. We talked last week about everything that goes into writing, reading, um, organizing, detailing, outlining, all of those things go theming your literature, all that goes into the writing process. So this part of writing is outlining. So if you do not outline, I'm willing to bet you don't know where you're going. So you can sit down and just try to freestyle writing and you'll be all over the place pulling information from everywhere and just trying to make it work. It's almost like a hodgepodge of writing. You don't want to do that. Um, your writing will look disjointed and, un and unfocused, and that'll be a problem. Not outlining also means you'll have a hard time starting because most of us want to start from the very beginning. We do this kind of in a chronological or ordinal kind of way. And we start from the very first sentence of the very first idea. And sometimes that's not the best place to start. But you can't start from the middle or from another part where your energy is telling you to go because you're not organized well enough to actually do that. So if you're not outlined, if you don't have your outlines organized well enough, and I'm going to show you or talk to you about how to organize your, your ideas well, if you don't have that, then you're starting from nowhere and you're starting from the beginning and it's the hardest place to start. So keep those possible three reasons in mind as to why writer's block occurs. Three possible reasons are emotional blocks, which I'm not qualified to deal with, misuse of your high and low energies, and you can go and listen to previous podcasts and get that energy on, get that information on high and low energy activities, and then not outlining, which we'll talk about tonight and not having a thorough enough detailed outline to actually write within your energy flow. 